Monster Hunter Generations is unique because it's an entry that has multiple flagship monsters, as opposed to just one. These are Glavinus, Astalos, Gameth, and Mizutsune, who together are known as the Faced Four. Three of them returned for the fifth generation of Monster Hunter, and because of that, we will cover their evolutions back to back in order of their return. Glavinus is considered the main flagship of Generations. He is a brute wyvern with a massive sword for a tail, which he primarily uses for attacks in conjunction with bites and fireballs. Unlike the other brutes, Glavinus has a unique roaring animation where he scrapes his tail against the floor. In terms of biting attacks, he can bite forward once or twice in a row, as well as to the side. In terms of sword attacks, he can scrape it along the ground, creating a fire volley. He can also slam it down, either while on the ground or after jumping to create more force, and he can also swing it behind him. Glavinus' sword by default is blue, but eventually it heats up. While it does more damage in this state, it also softens and takes much more damage, and this is the only way it can be severed. His signature attack has him grip the blade in his mouth, charging up before releasing a giant spin attack. Eventually the blade cools down, appearing worn out, and so Glavinus has to sharpen it again, turning it blue. He uses the shavings from his tail to heat up his throat, allowing him to shoot fireballs, either in front of him or to the side. They're quite special in that they'll land on the ground and explode after a short time. His bite attacks can also deal fire blight. Dealing enough damage to his head will cause the fire in his mouth to explode, knocking him over. When enraged, the blue spikes on his body become red, and he can slam his tail down twice in a row. When exhausted, he has a pin attack he uses to regain stamina that ends with him swiping his tail at you. G-Rank Glavinus has two new tail slams, a very fast one following a bite attack and a slower one that's a bit stronger. He also uses his pin more frequently. It's also worth mentioning if one of his fireballs lands between the both of you, it explodes and obscures your vision, and so Glavinus will always immediately go for a jumping slam. But if you go around the explosion, he won't bother. Generations gave Glavinus a deviant, the Hellblade Glavinus. This one is much redder than the other Glavinus, and in many ways he's quite similar to Most Hunter World's Theostra, in that he has both fire and blast modes. His Hellblade, so to speak, can still heat up, and he can still spit fire from his mouth. However, both parts can switch elements independently of each other from fire to blast. When this happens, the sword will turn red and black, and every strike will cause explosions. His bite attacks will inflict blast bites. Various sword attacks will also send blast powder scattered around, and his fireballs are far more potent too. When enraged and in blast tail mode, he will spin attack once, grab his tail again, and then perform an additional spin in a different direction. If his mouth is in blast mode too, then powder will spread across the arena. G-Rank Hellblade can combo his backslash into a triple fireball, and he can charge up a massive slam that causes a huge explosion. Glavinus is the only member of the Fated Four to return to Iceborne. He received a graphical overhaul and some slight adjustments. In Generations, his throat would heat up independently of his tail, but in Iceborne, they both enhance at the same time, with the same tail grinding animation. He no longer begins the fight with his old roar. Instead, he uses Wild's standard Brute Wyvern animation. Glavinus will instead do his tail scrape when he becomes enraged. He no longer performs his sideways drive-by fireball, but he can shoot a fireball while pivoting his body. And when he's enraged and performs a tail slam with a heated up tail, he can sometimes perform a flourish in the ground to the left or right. Acidic Glavinus is a new subspecies that resides in the Rotten Vale, and instead of red, he's more of a dark green. Rather than fire, Acidic makes use of, well, acid, that causes defense down. Normally his tail is coated in acidic crystals that spread the acid on the ground, and in this state, he's more or less identical to a standard Glavinus, just without the fire. However, he eventually scrapes the acidic crystals off, revealing a just as sharp but much thinner blade than the standard Glavinus. In this state, acidic Glavinus makes use of very advanced tail attacks. He will often enter a stance where his tail is at his side, pointed forward. He can perform precise stabs like Volcana, independent round slashes, up slashes, and perform other combos. 
For example, his old flame volley tail slash doesn't send out projectiles, but he combos it into a slam, and he can combo a jumping slam into a round slash, and sometimes he will grip the blade in his jaws and perform a quick double slash. While Acidic Lavinus is far more dangerous in this state thanks to the adept use of his tail, it's much more vulnerable and can be severed. Eventually, his tail gains more crystals and he goes back into Acidic mode. While Glavinus' fighting style can be compared to that of a hunter wielding a greatsword, Acidic's far more resembles that of a longsword player. Mizutsune is a leviathan and is often associated with the third generation of Monster Hunter due to his storyline taking place in Nukomo Village in Generations. He kind of resembles a flower, with pink fins looking like petals. Mizutsune, or Mizu for short, fights exclusively on land, making use of physical and bubble attacks, and overall, he's unlike any leviathan that came before him. Mizu still bites and body slams like other leviathans, but he can spin around, swinging his tail. Not only this, but he can slide and smack his tail down on you, flick his tail at you, and slip and slide around the arena in multiple directions. Mizutsune makes use of bubbles in his attacks and movements. He can blow three at once, or launch a massive one. These inflict you with bubble blight, causing you to slip and slide around the arena like a complete buffoon, unable to attack or properly dodge. Mizu can also launch bubbles with various other attacks, including red and green ones, which buff your attack or heal you respectively. His large bubble can be comboed into other physical attacks, and he can fire a beam of water. When enraged, his fins turn red, and he's able to launch bubbles with even more attacks, such as when he jumps around, or while flicking his tail. He can launch himself across the arena with a great leap, spinning while launching bubbles. In G rank, Mizu can lift himself up and slam his claw down, performing the attack twice when enraged, and he can sweep his water beam around in a circle. It's worth mentioning that Mizutsune's fins turn blue when he's exhausted. Soul Seer Mizutsune is a G rank exclusive deviant of Mizutsune. This one has lost the use of his eyes in battle, and instead uses bubbles to sense where his enemies are. He eats a special type of fish that gives him the unique ability to launch explosive fire bubbles when enraged. Soul Seer is noticeably slower than Mizu, but he has his own attacks, such as being able to perform a front flip that results in a powerful tail slam. By default, his arms and tail have grey fur that's hardened, causing your weapons to bounce off, but he can coat them with dark red bubbles that make them softer but deal more damage. Solcia starts off his fight asleep, but will wake up if he touches bubbles. In fact, touching his bubbles at any moment would immediately enrage him, which causes his left eye socket to become a flame. When enraged, he becomes faster and can perform a new attack where he twists through the air. While Mizutsune skipped Monster Hunter World, he did return for Rise. Bubble Blight has been reworked in this game. In Generations, getting hit once would give you an evasion boost, while getting hit more would make you slip and slide, completely helpless. But in Rise, you can still attack while bubbled, but your traction is reduced, and every evade will cause you to slip around slightly. Mizutsune has the Claw Slam, but he only does it once. He can fire a small burst of water, and fire a water laser upwards before sweeping it around. He has a special mode when enraged, where he coats himself in bubbles, allowing him to slip and slide with greater ease. This means that he can slide while using his straight laser, which makes him extra dangerous, although he can be knocked out of it. Rise also has the Apex Mizutsune, a variant that survived the storms of Wind Serpent Ibushi. Apex is just Soul Seer, but with a different appearance, and without the hardened tail and claws. He has the same attacks pretty much, although he leaps forward a bit when doing his tail swing, and never uses the normal water bubbles. Rather than fire, the bubbles inflict Magnamalo's Hellfire. Apex also has a special attack, where he spreads fire bubbles around while standing on his hind legs, all while sweeping a laser around before landing on all fours and firing it straight ahead. The standard Mizutsune is also in Sunbreak, getting a new attack where he sweeps his tail around, following it with a backflip slam when enraged. Title Update 2 gave us a brand new rare species, Violet Mizutsune, which makes him the first monster ever to have a rare species without a subspecies. Instead of pink, Violet is, well, Violet, and lives exclusively in secluded arenas like the Infernal Springs. Violet is a little similar to Solcia and Apex in that he makes use of fiery bubbles, and this is because his bubble foam is very oily, which means the bubbles he leaves on the ground will often burst into flames. He often spreads these oil bubbles onto the ground in a ring, 
in an attempt to trap you on the inside. Because his water attacks are more like fire, they will inflict you with fire blight. His bubbles are very similar to Sorcerer's and Apex's, but different in that they'll home in on you. In terms of physical attacks, he can double up his claw slam like in GU, and perform most of other Mizutune's attacks much faster. At a certain point in the fight, he will charge himself and power up. Up until this point, the arena theme would play as the background music, but after this moment, Mizutsune's own one overrides it for the rest of the fight, and he is one of two monsters in the entire game to do this. From here, he gains access to numerous attacks and abilities, like being able to create a large bubble that explodes into a whole group of them, being able to launch more bubbles and oil pools with standard attacks, and his claw slams causing explosions. He can also rapidly dash towards you while flipping through the air. Overall, he's much faster, and able to chain more attacks together. His head and tail are covered in flames, and dealing enough damage to them will knock him out of this state. If you leave him like this for long enough, he eventually creates a huge bubble that rises in the air as Violet himself glows with more intensity. Leave him like this for even longer, and he'll perform a special attack where he draws you in and brings the bubble down, blowing it up and inflicting massive damage. However, knocking him out while the bubble is active will cause it to fall down on him, dealing massive damage to him. An event quest was later released for a hazard version of Violet Mizutsune, with some minor but important differences. He starts off in the second phase with his theme already playing. More of his attacks create bubbles, which of course home in on you. His water burst attacks will have several explosions released in a row. His bubble volley is always followed up with him leaping at you, and he can double up his explosive claw slam. Because his health is increased, it can take longer to lock him out of his enhanced state making it more likely that the large bubble will fall on you. Astalos is a flying wyvern, associated with the first generation, as his questline is tied to Kokoto village. His main element is thunder, which he can create from his mouth, tail, and by charging his wings. Astalos is an extremely aggressive fighter, contrasting with the precision of Glavaness and the grace of Mizutsune. He likes to slam his wings down, either on the ground once or rapidly after descending from the sky. He can also swipe his wings, which have a surprising amount of range. Like other flying weapons, he will swing his tail, but instead of swinging a second time, it aims a blast of thunder directly at you. He can also swing his head around, infusing it with thunder for more damage, and launch bolts that move left and right. Astalos will eventually enrage, and gain access to even more attacks, such as being able to swipe his wings twice in a row, and launch himself across the arena to perform powerful wing slams. He can charge up his body parts, causing his head attacks to have more range, and his wing attacks to explode with thunder. He can launch two bolts that crisscross each other before launching a more circular blast, and he can descend from the sky and land with a powerful explosion. His tail can also be charged, turning it into a pincer that can inflict paralysis. Dealing enough damage to these charged body parts will cause them to return to normal for a while. G-Rank Astalos can shove his tail into the ground while airborne, creating an energy field that is even bigger when he's charged up. He can perform two charged wing slams back to back as well. Bolt Reaver Astalos is a G-Rank only deviant. At first, he resembles and acts like an already charged Astalos. His wings and crest are bigger, and he already has his tail pincer. However, he's coloured with a blue tint, and he possesses different thunderbolts that he can launch in different ways, such as by flipping through the air. His regular attacks are also stronger. Bolt Reaver's big differences emerge when he supercharges himself, turning fully blue. From here, his attacks become bigger and stronger, and he gains the ability to create a lightsaber from his head, either airborne or from the ground. Astalos could also create a short blade, but it's nothing compared to this. His energy field has another wave, and several bolts appear within it for added danger. When blue charged, Bolt Reaver can also launch an orb attack that sucks you in. Making contact will cause heavy damage, but running away blindly is not advised, as Bolt Reaver also prepares for a giant aerial slam, or a rapid wing slam. It's worth mentioning that like Zenoka, placing a shock trap down will charge Astalos up. Not only that, but attacking him while his tail is in the ground can cause him to fall down. Astalos returned to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, with the same general changes as Glavinus and Mizutsune, such as an updated appearance 
and completely redone theme. A big visual difference is that his body parts will appear to be more yellow and charged up. Sunbreak Astalos doesn't have many new attacks, just what his G rank self in Generations Ultimate had, but with some different combos like swinging his head onto a tail blast. His thunderbolts travel much faster, and he has access to a lightsaber attack, although it's a lot shorter, and he can only do it from the ground. He can also zoom into the ground and swing his tail. Gameth is a fanged beast and is closely associated with the second generation of Monster Hunter. That was the generation that first introduced ice monsters and the snowy mountains, and Gameth mainly resides there, with her questline being in Pokey Village in Generations. Gameth quite literally resembles a giant mammoth, and to this day is probably one of the biggest non-elder, non-boss monsters in the entire series. She attacks primarily using her enormous trunk and by throwing her weight around. She can use her trunk to dig out snow from the ground and either throw it at you, or fire it as a projectile. She can swing it from side to side while approaching, as well as slam it down in front of her. She can even use it to suck you close to her, allowing for an easy attack. Her tusks can also be used to dig into the ground. One of Gameth's favourite attacks is her lifting up her front legs and slamming them down, dealing heavy damage and causing tremors. She can also use her trunk to draw ice from the ground, which coats her legs in snow and you if you're close enough, and this will cause her slams to deal more damage with a bigger radius. Gameth also has a pin attack too, where she uses her trunk to damage you. G rank Gameth has one major addition, sometimes when she raises her two front legs to slam down, she will instead fall backwards. Elder Frost Gameth is a deviant introduced in Generations Ultimate, exclusive to G rank. She's a much older Gameth, and has a much greater mastery of the cold. For example, she can coat her legs and tail with ice rather than snow, and her trunk can be coated too. Elder Frost can grab huge chunks of ice and smash them into the snow, causing a huge explosion. She can also grab an even bigger chunk and have it split into several pieces while in the air. Her most dangerous attack has her bury her head into the ground and charge forward, dealing massive damage and lodging ice chunks everywhere. So we've just covered 11 monsters in one video, which might be a new record. Let's go through them one by one. Glavinus is a really solid monster in Generations. He has a wide variety of really well telegraphed attacks, his fight is well paced with his throat and sword mechanics, and overall that makes him a lot of fun to fight. I love how satisfying it is to go at him with an evasion or counter based playstyle. Seeing the giant blade fall down only to perfectly time a dodge or counter is very satisfying. I don't like Glavinus in Iceborne as much, I think visually he looks amazing, but he's slightly worse than the Generations version. Because world maps have a lot of slopes, I find that many of his attacks miss me completely, while I often struggle to hit him, meaning both of us are constantly swinging and missing at each other. The fact that his sword and tail heat at the same time makes his moveset variety a lot worse, as he will only use his fireballs under certain circumstances. Not only this, but it's no secret that I hate the Catch Claw, and that kind of brings down his fight too. I also think his theme isn't as good as it was in Generations. It's cleaner because they're using real instruments, but it sounds out of tune at times, and it doesn't really have the energy of the original. Hellblade Glavinus is a deviant I didn't really fight much until this video, but I must say, he is really interesting. The way he mixes and matches fire and blast makes him quite tricky to deal with, and I love the way he spins twice in a row. I was quite surprised by how good acidic Glavinus was, because my first battle had left a really bad impression on me, but giving him these smooth, fluid katana strikes really helped differentiate him from the standard Glavinus, and they're so well animated. I think I just really like it when a monster uses their body parts as swords, and Acidic is just really cool to watch. I love the idea of removing a monster's elemental power by making up for it with some other physical characteristic. Next we move on to Mizutsune. I used to really dislike the Generations version, 
because I felt like every attack would have you chase after him. Nowadays, I like him a bit better. He's probably one of the more interesting Leviathans we've ever had. Solsia was really cool. I find it so crazy how even touching one bubble will send him into rage, and mixing the fire and water bubbles is an interesting twist. I really like Mizutsune in Rise. He just fits a lot better here, and graphically looks really detailed. The change they made to Bubble Blight makes fighting him a bit better too, because it still messes with your movement, but it doesn't make you helpless. Apex Mizutsune, what else is there to say, you know? I get why he exists, and yeah, he is just Solsia, but he's a bad substitute. That being said, he's still a cool fight, and I do really like when his tail is fired up. The blue glow is really nice. And then there's Violet Mizutsune. I'm far from the first person to point this out, but despite Mizutsune making use of water, pretty much all his variations make use of fire in some way, which is pretty weird. It kinda reminds me of Uragon, who also has three variations, and only one of them does something wildly different. I don't think it's really a problem with Violet though, because he's a ton of fun. Very difficult at times. The homing bubbles mean you constantly have to stay on the move. And it is really cool how during phase 2, his own theme overrides that of the arena. It's very clear that they were going for their own Raging Brachidios moment, but with a lot less budget. I think it still worked out really well. The Hazard version is significantly harder too, which is great for those who found Violet a bit too easy. Astalos is a very solid flying wyvern. I love how some of his attacks just send you flying, and in general, he's very well telegraphed and wonderfully animated. Until this video, I slept on Bolt Reaver, but I had so much fun fighting against him. The blue thunder attacks are very threatening, and dodging the lightsaber always makes my heart jump a bit. I really think they need to bring back the deviants. They're solid fights, and it's quite tragic that they're just stuck in generations. I'm a little bit disappointed that there wasn't any kind of subspecies for Astalos in Generations, because he himself didn't get that many new attacks, but overall, he had a very good implementation in this game. I also love what they did with his theme, mostly because with the original rendition in Generations, they didn't use real instruments and looped after 60 seconds. Meaning despite being very cool, it was very repetitive. You'd constantly be blasted with over and over again. Sunbreak's rendition uses real instruments and extends it with a new climax, which is really nice. Then there's Gameth. I really want to like Gameth. I love her design, her theme, and her fights, in theory. But she's just so boring. Most of her attacks have her slam her front legs down, and it's often really hard to see what she's doing just because of how big she is. The biggest indictment of her is that in her introduction map, the Arctic Ridge, she can only move around in three of the eight total areas because they're the only ones big enough to hold her. If they want to put her in a new game, I think the camera wouldn't be much of an issue because Wild and Rise tend to be quite dynamic with theirs, zooming out when necessary, but they would certainly have to design an ice map to accommodate her. In the fifth generation, monsters will move between areas physically down the same paths we do, which means all these pathways would have to be big enough so that she doesn't get stuck. Of course there's the fight, I have no suggestions there right now, maybe you guys do. Which member of the Fated 4 is your favourite, and if so, which version of them? Do you think World and Rise did a good job updating them, and do you want Gameth to be in the next game? Let me know in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe, and have a good day.